What's up everybody? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. How's it going? My name is Bailey Canning. I am an independent digital marketing strategist. And on today's video, I wanted to give you my thoughts on the Rayloom library along with the Client First Framework. The Client First Framework is a class naming convention to keep your Webflow projects more organized. And the Rayloom library is built using the Client First Framework and it makes it super easy with a massive library of pre-made components to quickly build the structure of every page you're going to need on a website to then ultimately create the design from there. So these are probably the two most popular frameworks in the Webflow community. And I finally got a chance to try them out on a recent client project of mine. And so based on that experience using that on that one project, I wanted to now take the time to give you my thoughts and my opinion. Essentially, this is like a review video, but when I was doing research, trying to find, you know, people's in-depth thoughts and reviews on these two frameworks and using them together, I really couldn't find anything super helpful. So if you're a designer, a creative or a marketer looking to implement this onto one of your future Webflow projects, I definitely highly recommend sticking around and checking out this whole video because I think it's going to be super helpful and give you all the information you're going to want to need before committing to something like this. Real quick, before we get into all that, if you like the idea of that and you find this type of content helpful, subscribe to my channel, like the video, I would really appreciate it. Helps me out and you'll be able to see all the new content I'm putting out anytime between one to two videos per week, generally speaking. All right, so before we can really get into the review, we first need to talk about the why behind using one of these development frameworks and component libraries in the first place. Long story short, using a pre-built class naming convention, such as the one that is offered in the client first framework, along with a component library where you can easily copy and paste a lot of very commonly used sections and layouts that pretty much every website features. If you're the main developer or you're working with a team of developers on a website project, using a framework like this along with the component library could save you anywhere between, I estimate, obviously it's very dependent on the scope of the project, but I would say at least 10 hours minimum, probably more like 15 to 20 hours if it's a larger project. But you could think of it, you know, in percentage terms, probably shaving off anywhere between a quarter to one third of the amount of time and effort it would take to get that project if you were to do it from scratch versus using a component library such as Rayloom, as well as also having a pre-developed uh, naming convention for all your classes and all the spacing and margins. So we'll look at the documentation real quick in a second, but long story short, I would recommend basically every Webflow developer be using some sort of framework. Client First and Rayloom are not the only ones, there are several other ones. I started off with the System Flow framework a few years back, but unfortunately, even though it was like three or $400, it was good, it did have some issues and it did get some updates that were starting to alleviate those issues, but then it only got three or four updates. And so basically I was forced to find a new solution. And the good thing about Client First and Rayloom is that both the companies behind that are super involved with updating them on a monthly basis at least. And so it's a really great option for any company or agency or in-house team that's looking to implement something like this because they're going to keep supporting it because it's already one of the most popular frameworks in the whole Webflow community. And it's probably only going to get more popular from here. Let's just dive right into it, starting with the Reloom component library. Let's talk about all the different items you have here. So for all the sections of a website that essentially every website is going to have, whether we're talking about a CTA or header, you basically have all of these pre-made components where you can browse in a library. So these are headers. Let's look at perhaps like a hero header section. So we have that right here. You can now just browse through each of these designs and then whatever you like, you can then click copy into Webflow and then paste into your project. You also have the ability to preview, which I really like, especially mobile and all that type of stuff. This is especially helpful for a lot of these items have interactions. So for example, they've really put a lot of work into creating some really nice designed things here, not just the standard components and the templates you would expect, but something that adds like a lot more visual interest, such as this sliding hero image component. Basically, you can think of yourself as a designer or developer. You're probably, if you have to build all this from scratch, over and over again, having a library like this is gonna save you a lot of time because literally everything here, you can just copy and paste right into Webflow. Also very important to note that there is a Figma kit as well. So there is a free version of Rayloom. I'm not too familiar with it because I've always been on the paid version, but there is a free version, at least in Figma. This is very helpful because as you're creating wireframes for your clients, you can use the same library in Figma. And then once the design is approved and it's time to go into development, then you can just copy and paste all the sections 
transactions over. So it makes building a lot quicker. It's pretty straightforward, I would say. I don't think we need to go through all of these, but you can see how for a contact sections, any place where you're gonna need a form on the website, there's already these pre-built components, nav bars, footers, all that type of stuff, pricing sections, you have that here. And yeah, I really can't just stress enough the amount of time you save, especially when you think about, so we have testimonials here, especially when you think about the fact that these are already made responsive, so you don't really need to worry about it too much. Of course, you should still do your due diligence and double check things, but basically you have a ton of different designs here. And this is something where I think compared to system flow, Rayloom really stands out because there are already a lot of different unique designs, four or five websites with the old framework system flow. And it was a much more, I would say maybe it has two to 300 sections, whereas Rayloom has over a thousand. I don't know the exact number. It just saves you so much time, so much energy and effort. And it also just allows you to provide a much better design to your clients and final end product, which I think is obviously the whole reason why we're even in this business in the first place. So really could not recommend using something like this more. I don't understand why basically any Webflow developer would not be using it. But if you disagree with me, if you find some sort of problem using these frameworks, Definitely let me know in the comments. I would love to hear why. I would love to hear a counterpoint. Real quick, if you're finding this video helpful, definitely subscribe to my channel, like I said earlier. And if you are a in-house marketing director or you are a business owner that is looking to develop a new website in Webflow and is considering these tools and is considering hiring a independent consultant such as myself to build the website, then definitely feel free to book a strategy call. It's no obligation, but I'll take the time to learn about your project and provide you with the best possible advice for your project. So essentially you will have a game plan coming out of that 30 minute meeting to get it done. Link in the description. You can literally book time directly on my calendar. The Rayloom library is built with a framework called Client First, which is made by a company called FinSuite. They're probably one of the best, if not the best in the game at the moment in terms of developing websites. And they have a quick guide, which I think will make sense to go over right now. There's a lot of different global elements that are already pre-built into this framework. Things like colors, things like fonts, things like uh, spacing and margin and padding and all that type of stuff that are already have their pre-existing names along with pre-existing pre settings um, in regards to the variables that we're talking about. And so basically you have an entire development framework that you can use that's just gonna speed up things even more. And the reason why I'm covering this again is because the entire Rayloom library here is built with the client first naming convention. So basically if you wanna choose Rayloom, you also have to make the conscious choice to choose the client first framework. Now I've used a lot of different frameworks in the past. I originally started off in the WordPress space. I was using one called Oxy Ninja, which was cool, but it was nowhere near as powerful as this thin suite client first framework. And I must say, I was skeptical of using this thing because there's always a huge switching cost, you know, but I gotta say, honestly, it took me, I'm pretty well experienced, but I would say it took me maybe like an hour of playing around to really get my head wrapped around it. And then by the end of the project, which I'll show you at the end of this video, I think really it was all very pretty straightforward. There are a couple things here that I'm not too crazy about how it works, um, but we can talk about that in a second. I think it makes the most sense just to go over this client first quick guide because I think it's how you can evaluate if this might be something for you or not. You'll be able to choose if it is or if it's not and start to look at other options. But there's a ton of different classes for controlling the background colors globally. For It also gives you some instructions here on how to add your own custom classes, which you'll need to be doing. And then we also have a lot of pre-built um, classes as well, which I'll talk about in a second. Every page gets its own unique page structure, which I did not think this was super helpful with this like main wrapper and then a section in it. I just didn't, because generally speaking, you would have each section would be in its own and there would be no main wrapper wrapping all of them. But actually, if you did want to clone pages, this makes it a lot easier in many circumstances. Another really big benefit of the client first framework, especially coming from system flow, which I was used to, is that it uses REM for spacing and margin and padding and sizing and all that type of stuff. This is a much more accessible and more like fluid responsive way to use sizing and type and all that type of stuff. So definitely would recommend using this over pixels or other the uh, static type metrics. Another benefit of these frameworks is that it's going to allow all of your designs and your typography to be extremely consistent, which is not something we really think about when it comes to great looking websites. Like, oh my goodness, the fonts are so consistently sized, but it is important just subconsciously because that can Consistency is what's ultimately going to deliver a, a well-pleasing website design. You have all these pre-built classes for weights and colors and sizes, alignments, etc. Also, spacing is included, so basically all the padding sizes. Instead of just having differently sized padding sections, you just have different options that you can apply to areas where it makes sense to put a spacing class. And then padding large, padding extra large, padding X large. They all have the same settings, so you just need to apply the class once and it'll apply the setting. And then also a huge benefit is if you want to change it in one place, you can change it globally throughout the website, which certainly would have saved me a lot of time if we had something like this back in my agency days. 
Again, they have spacing here. This was the one area where I was not too crazy about how, for example, still had the heading wrapped in something called patty bottom and patty medium. That was probably my biggest complaint, honestly, is that it makes it hard to know when you're looking at the Webflow page structure of what exactly it is that you're looking at. So they also have a different option, which I don't really understand why there's now two different ways to do the same thing of how you can have space or blocks in between. So I'm not too crazy about that, but it's not the end of the world. And then they also have like a folder structure if you really want to go in and organize things. And then it talks about adding more utility classes and stuff. There's a lot much better documentation, much more in-depth that FinSuite, I believe, has made themselves. So I don't really want to go over all that in today's video, but this should give you a pretty quick overview if you think this is helpful. But then in practice, for example, so this is my personal brand website that I made recently. This is actually all made with the client first framework and essentially I took sections. So let's see what this is called. We can find out real quick. We go section layout five, four, layout 54. And then if I want to just search that here, layout 54, and then basically I guess I took this section somehow and made it into this. Another benefit that I didn't even think to bring up until now is that the Rayloom library is unstyled, so you can make your own styles very easily to it. So this is very good because if it were styled and it wasn't fitting your company's brand, there would be a lot of work you need to do just to unstyle it and then style it in the direction you want to do it. But yeah, this is like uh, this was all built with the client first framework. Honestly, it took me like two or three hours. I think it came out pretty solid. It was just supposed to be like a really quick job anyway. I'll be adding more to this as time goes on. But yeah, basically, if I wanted to add a new page, so for example, like videos, I could go in. I'll show you real quick how to do one of these things. Let's say here, maybe this would make sense. If I wanted to just add it in, I can just hit paste it into the main wrapper. Sometimes it renames classes. This is another thing. For some reason, it keeps renaming classes. If anybody knows why this does it, I don't know, but basically they should all be the same classes, which is not ideal, but anyway. Also, once you download the Chrome extension, you can also browse all these components natively right in Webflow, but I honestly just prefer to use the, the actual Rayloom library website because I just find it's a little easier to use. All right, so now before I let you go here, I wanted to at least give you a real world client example. This is the component library kit in Figma, which I mentioned at the start of the video. And this is for a recent client project I finished up for a structural engineering company in San Diego. And so as always, the projects, they always start with a UX wireframe. So at this point in time, while you know, it doesn't look super exciting or anything like that, we're really just trying at this point in the user experience design phase to narrow down what content and what's the layout of every page gonna be. And then once we're in agreement on that, then we can move forward with actually designing the website. So of course it started with this and you can see here that these are all just the Rayloom sections copy and pasted. And then eventually we then move forward with creating the actual UI wireframe. So these represent the final design for the pages. So you can see how it's very easy to take the structure, but then also put your own creative spin on it, like is done here. And then finally, if we go to the completed website here, this is the end result. So basically, as you can see, I'm really straightforward to put this together. Honestly, if I had to do this from scratch, it would have taken me a lot more time, a lot more energy, and a lot less sleep. And I really do, you know, commend the team over at Raylu. They really put in a lot of time and effort to make really well designed components. You know, the class naming conventions and all that are really well done. And then as you can see, you know, the spacing is consistent, the typography is consistent, everything is really well done and consistent, and yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. I know there's lots of like a lot of these sections, well, they do have very standard looking sections. There are also, as I love, these uncommon and interactive sections where you can quickly find cool little designs to speed up things and present to your clients. All right, and so wrapping up now, what are my final thoughts? What are my conclusions? Will I be using this for future projects? The answer is 100% yes, I will be using this for all future client projects. I'm also using it on my personal brand website site as you saw yourself and really I was very impressed the learning curve obviously depends on how much experience you have in Webflow and in web development in general but I would say the learning experience was a lot shorter than I was expecting and that was honestly my main concern is because I thought it might take a couple hours to really figure it all out but honestly it probably took 45 minutes to an hour to really get a solid grip on things and then there's always there's a ton of documentation what we looked at was just a quick start guide but there's a really there's a ton of in-depth documentation to basically answer any question you may have and yeah I would definitely say I did a lot of in-depth research on some other options there are definitely some other really good options in the Webflow space if you're looking for a component library and a class naming framework but I would say this is the 
most popular one. So that's definitely going to be one of the main reasons to get on the bandwagon, so to speak, because the network effects are very real. If you're a Webflow developer or designer, you're going to see a lot of job applications saying that they want you to have experience in this client first framework. And especially if you're applying for agencies as well and things like that. So really, I do think it's great. There are a couple nitpicking things I have issues with, but then we have all have small issues with whatever software we're using to get our jobs done. The Raylan library, I think it costs almost $40 a month. I mean, with the amount of time it's saving you, it more than pays for itself. So that's no concern on my part. And the client first framework is free and always updated by FinSuite. So that's good as long as that keeps happening. And yeah, I would definitely recommend probably maybe starting this off with a smaller project, which is what I did building my new personal brand website. But then based on that experience, I was like, this is a really rock solid framework. This is really going to help me deliver better results to my clients. And that's ultimately how I was able to commit to using it on the uh, structural engineering firm website that we just took a quick look at. And I'll be using it for essentially all projects going forward unless something were to dramatically change. So hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions on the framework, leave a comment because I will help you out. I try to answer all the comments. And so yeah, if you found this video helpful, subscribe. I'm putting out content all about branding, websites, marketing, etc. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.